Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well we've got a module switch for you today. We've got a module here. You can do this with any two modules but I've got two little blurb modules with an image and some text, a question. When you click on the button it's going to flip into a different module with an answer and different image. Same with these two. And that's a nice little feature to have on your site. Really easy to do. We've got to do a bit of coding for this, but don't let that put you off. I'll put it all up on screen for you. So let's get started. I'm going to start a new page to do this today. We'll give it a name. And of course, I want to use the Divi Builder. And let's build from scratch. I'm going to pop three little columns in. And I'm going to put a blurb module in. Now this first module is the one that we're going to see initially. And then we're going to build a switch underneath that we can click on. And we'll have a different one fade in on top. Like I say, you can mix and match. You don't have to use two blurb modules if you don't want to. So let's just say this is a question. Or we'll say question one. I'm going to make it too long there. We'll pop an image in there. Okay. Change that to a one rather than an exclamation mark. Well, we've got our first one. Like I say, that's one we're going to see initially and we want to flip it to the answer. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go up. I'm going to give this a fixed height. So I'm going to go to my design. I'm going to go to sizing. We've got height down here. Now I want it big enough to contain the biggest answer that I'm going to have. So I'm going to guess about 400, 450 pixels. If you need to see how big it's going to be, just go to your content, go to the background, pop a little back, background color in there. Then you can go to your design, go to the sizing, make it the size you want with the height. You can either slide your slider, as you can see it's getting bigger and smaller. For me about yeah, I think 400 is probably going to do it because our buttons are going to be underneath. So I'm going to say 400 for mine. Obviously, you make yours whatever size you want. Now we've got it the size we want. We can take that background away unless, of course, you want that background on there. OK, now we've done that. What I'm actually going to do is make a complete duplicate of this by cloning it. If I click on it, dark tab for a module, green tab for a row, blue tab for a section, two little squares on all of these, you can clone whatever it is you're clicking on, which for us is the module. So I'm going to clone this and make it into my answer. So let's go down into the one we've just cloned here. We'll go in there. Let's make this question two. And of course, we'll want a bit more text than that for an answer. So I'll just double it up as I have no real answer. There we go. OK, and we'll say answer. Answer one. Great, and let's give it a different image also down below is image and icon. That'll do fine. OK, well, let's save this now. What we've actually got to do is move this module over the top of the one above. We know it's 450 pixels high, so we need to give it a margin on top of negative 450. But we've also got what they call the gutter, the space between the two little modules there. So it may be 500, but we'll adjust it and see. So let's go back in there, go over to design and spacing, margin, let's give it negative 450 and see what it looks like. Negative 450. And there we have it. OK, well, the answer is just slightly higher than the question there. So let's bring it down. Let's try negative 400. A bit below. So we can increment up. You see the top of the image up at the top there. We can increment up or down as it is with a negative one until they're in line with each other. 
there we have it 430 is the magic number great so now we want our answer to be invisible you can put a white background on this if we go into this blurb that we're in now content put a white background on you will not see what's behind it there so let's put that white background on there we go we now need to give this CSS ID so we can target it with some code in a minute so I'm going to go in here and let's give it a CSS ID let's call it ANS1 for answer one okay well now comes the fun bit we've got to create a button out of code that's going to toggle between our two there now once you've done some negative positioning like this you're going to have a hard time getting to the module that's underneath so the best way to do it is to go down to the purple button click on it go over to wireframe mode or back end mode if you will and it will take you to the back end mode and you can edit that way let's add a code module while i'm in here and i'm going to flip back to desktop view so we can see what's going on okay we want to create a button so it's left pointy bracket the word button and we'll give it a class so we can identify it and target it with some CSS to style it so class equals that's in open and close some inverted commas in between let's call it switch button or SWPTBTN for switch button my, my sort of shorthand call yours what you want but it wants to make a bit of sense to you okay now we want it when it we click on it we want it to do something so we're going to say on click equals and we've got to create a function function so again let's open some inverted commas I'm going to call it my function let's call it function X call yours what you want but it wants to be unique again because you might want to do two or three of these on the page if you're doing the same thing so we'll call one this first one function X let's open some round brackets there okay now we can close the pointy bracket for the button and it puts a closing button tag in there for us and in between the closing tag and the my function tag right there we can write what we want the button to say so let's say answer as you can see we've got a button down here saying that okay let's tidy this up there we go okay now we've given it a class we can actually style that button so however you want it for your site by using that SWBTN class so let's open some style tags the left pointy bracket the word style right pointy bracket and in between we can put the style that we want for our button here so we need the class name so our class name was SWBTN all class names have to have a dot or a period in front of them and then the class name then we can open and close some curly brackets we can style our button firstly let's give it a background as you can see that's turned the background blue there I want that writing or the writing on it to be white so I'll say color colon white or FFF that's better don't want any border on there so I'm going to say border none great and want it to be a bit bigger so let's do that with a bit of padding and I'm going to give it 15 top and bottom and 25 left and right so let's say 15 pixels top and bottom and 25 pixels left and right starting to look a bit more like a button but let's make that font size a bit bigger say font size I want mine to be about 20 pixels and again all this is entirely up to you it's getting a little bit more like a button now okay let's give it some slightly rounded corners so I'll say border radius dash radius now yeah, let's say eight pixels there we go that's fine I'm going to leave it just like that okay so we start our button now what do we want it to do we need to create the function for that so let's open some script tags down below here and they're the same as the style but just with script inside so it's left left pointy bracket script 
right pointy bracket it'll put a closing one in there we've got to create the function that we gave our button so we're going to say function and we've got to give it the name and we gave it my function x didn't we so it's my function x with some round brackets at the end there then we've got to tell it what that function needs to do so let's open some curly brackets here well we wants to get an element and it wants to sort of toggle that element off and on which is going to be our answer one here which we, we gave the class of ANS1 so just check that because if we don't get it right it's not going to work so let's just save those changes ANS1 there it is we want to make sure we get that right with code if you don't do exactly the right thing it won't work correctly so we want to say variation or var element so we want to get this element and this element equals a document dot get element by the id and that was that id ans1 so it's get element capital e by capital b id capital i and we've got to give it that id open some round brackets there and inside inside some semicolons we need to give it the a and s1 the id we just looked at now we need to create a class to bring it back once we make it disappear because initially i'm going to hide this thing so let's hide it now in the styles just above let's create target that little id it's ans1 ans1 open and close some curly brackets and we want to make it disappear so i'm going to say display colon none and we're left with our question up there as you can see put a semicolon on there and the time it takes to do that let's slow it down a bit for when we bring it back we'll do give it a bit of a transition duration while we're in here transition dash duration let's maybe give it a second or three quarters of a second 0.75 seconds 0.75 s okay so we created that so it's no longer there now let's create a css class to bring it back so let's create a new class of of show a let's call it so it's a class has a dollar of a period and we're going to say show capital a and we're going to make anything that's got that class if it's invisible we're going to make sure that we can see it by saying display block and we might be overriding some styles to bring it back so we're going to use important which is exclamation mark important don't like to use that and sometimes you just have to so we've created a class to hide it now there's the id we've actually hidden it and we created this class so we can bring it back so let's make our function do that so we'll put a semicolon after our last line and let's say element dot class list capital L for list we want it to toggle between the two so it's dot toggle and then we'll give it that new class list name which is show a so open some round brackets some inverted commas and it's S H O W capital A for our class right here okay if we've done everything correctly now that should work for us so let's save this we'll save our draft let's exit the visual builder and there's our little question there when I click on the answer button it's fading in to our answer one when I click back it'll go back to the original and of course if you want to duplicate this it's very easy to do but you want to make sure that your functions have unique names and your classes have unique names i'll quickly demonstrate if we go back and enable the visual builder let's go to back end mode here wireframe mode and i'm going to duplicate this one and i'm going to duplicate the one below we know they're going to work with each other and also the button right here and obviously you'd go in change your picture or whatever it is your question 
put a different picture in there. But the important thing in the actual one that's coming in on top, you want to give it another unique ID. Let's call this answer two, perhaps. So they don't open the wrong ones on top of the other ones for you. So now we're given that one. We've got to change our code in here. We also want to change the function name so it's unique. So we'll change function x to function what function y. The class for the button can stay the same because the styling's the same for everything. So we said answer two for that one. We changed it. CSS ID. And function x changes to function y. And this is answer two. So they got a unique function and a unique ID on each of those. Let's save our changes now. We should have two. And of course you can duplicate to your heart's content here. There's our question two. There's our answer two. I know they're the same, but I didn't change anything in that second one if you want them functioning that's the way to do it just make sure they got a unique function name and a unique CSS ID for your answer on each one so there you go guys there's how to flip a module on a button click I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful if you have please give it a thumbs up ring the bell comment share and subscribe to our YouTube channel once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignDetectives.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.